channel. I'm Doris. I'm here to share with you about the market updates. Consumption and manufacturing fell across the board, and the U.S. economy was gradually cooling down. Both consumer and manufacturing activity have slowed significantly on the back of high inflation and borrowing costs. Retail sales fell the most, fell the most in four months, mainly due to a decline in gas station revenue and slower auto deal businesses. Manufacturing output also fell more than expected, despite revisions in the first two months, leaving production still up slightly in the first quarter. Combined with signals from recent inflation data, economic data released overnight shows that the U.S. economy is gradually moving towards cooling. Still, traders expect the Fed to raise rates by another 25 basis points in May, but, uh, but some policymakers have recently hinted uh, at openness to a pause. U.S. consumption is accelerating its contraction, and industrial activity continues to slow. U.S. retail sales in March were negative 1% sequential, well below market expectations of 0.4% de- decrease, census bureau data show Friday. However, excluding car and gasoline, U.S. retail sales fell 0.3% in, mar- in March from the previous, previous months, above expectations of minus 0.5%. In addition, the control group of retail sales used to calculate GDP fell less than expected in retail sales, excluding food services, auto dealers, building materials, stores, and gas stations. On Friday night, data from the Federal Reserve showed U.S. manufacturing output was negative 0.5% from the previous months, well below market expectations of negative 0.1% and the first decline this year. Manufacturing output fell mainly as companies showing signs of scaling back their investment plans and rising borrowing costs. However, manufacturing output grew up to 0.6% in January from 0.1%. Industrial output rose 0.4% month on month in March, slightly above expectation of 0.2%, and was also revised up to 0.2% from 0.0%. The common theme of data this morning, the first quarter is relatively strong and good, but into the second quarter, slowly de- slowed significantly. BMP, Pereva Senior American econo- Economist, Elena Sh- Shuyoteva said, this you can see in the control group retail sales. You can see this in the industrial production data, especially in the manufacturing industry. Under high inflation, the economy is still under great pressure. According to the recent price data, the inflation is on a downward trend and the economy remains intense pressure. The preliminary April survey released by University of Michigan showed consumers expect inflation rise to 4.6% from 3.6% in March the biggest rise in nearly two years, and inflation expectations for the next five years have stabilized at 2.9% from the fifth straight months. Consumers expect gasoline prices to rise to their highest in six months over the next year, and at their highest in nearly a year. Consumers are fully aware that inflation has fallen from, from its peak, but high prices still upset them about their financial situation, the commentary said. Others argue that the headline inflation has previously fallen due to lower gasoline prices, but the trend could soon reverse. And more worryingly, core inflation, excluding food and energy, remains stubbornly high, which is the risk that the Fed could hold higher interest rates for longer. As the comments say, CPI data released earlier this year showed a high year-on-year rebound in core CPI under housing pressures, showing inflation stickiness. The PPI data provided more good news. Both overall and core PPI growth was lower than expected, with the lowest year-on-year growth in more than two years and the lowest month-on-month growth in nearly three years. But it is alarming that the massive production cut announced early by OPEC Plus is likely to continue to slow the downward trend in inflation. Deutsche Bank economist Justin Wintner said, the so Fed officials will focus more on the fact that there is m- still some uncertainty about the inflation expectation and the fact that they cannot take a good signal for granted. Consumption and manufacturing fell across the board. We didn't see the end of the world, but they were affected by the relevant market sentiment in the banking sector. 
a major shareholder in Charles Schwab, the eighth largest U.S. bank, liquidity, liquidated its entire stake in brokerage, worth $1.4 billion during the bank turmoil last month. The shareholder is reportedly GQG Partners, a Florida-based investor. As of December 31st, GQG had been one of the top 15 major shareholders of Charles Schwab, holding around 1% according to data. In, in lately, GQG established this position in the third quarter of 2022, according to securities filings, filings. At the end of the last year, GQG owned 17.4 million shares of Charles Schwab, worth $1.4 billion, though it was unclear the value of the shares at the sale. GQG partners, the reason for clearing its holding in Charles Schwab is mainly due to concerns about losses and the impact of shrinking deposit profits from the company's future growth prospects. We didn't see the end of the world, but they were affected by relevant market sentiment in the banking sector. Mark Barker, head of international operations at GQG partners, told the media. Schwab ended $330 billion in mortgage-backed bonds, treasuries, and other debt securities. But with the Fed continuing to raise interest rates and bond prices falling, the value of the portfolio has fallen to $307 billion. Some of the losses caused by Schwab's common stock costs fell to $27 billion at the end of the year, compared with more than $46 billion in the same period in 2021, according to the filing. According to a previous Wall Street report, the Barclays reports showed that Schwab held saleable financial assets AS, AFS 24 times larger than t- tangible equity, 10 times larger than SVB, and 10 billion yuan higher than SVB. Its holdings of maturing financial assets were 2.35% two, 2. the tangible share capital doubled the SVB. In other words, if SVB loss loses one of its assets and loses one of itself, it'll lose at two of itself. In addition, in the back of the banking turmoil, Schwab's clients have begun to shift cash from low yield accounts to higher yielding products, such as brokerages, money market funds, to take advantage of the Fed's rate hike. Schwab is losing deposit income as all money flow into money market funds, Barker said. But it is worth mentioning that the Schwab deposits are more fragmented and stable than the closed SVB. Schwab focused on brokerages and the wealth management, has a wider range of deposits than SVB, which relies mainly on demand deposits, and is more sticky with financial transactions. However, J.P. Morgan said the cash diversion could be faster than the maturing assets held by Schwab, also putting greater pressure on Schwab's debt side. Schwab's deposits plunged 17% to $366 billion last year, according to media reports. At the same time, its interest costs have more than tripled to $1.6 billion, squeezing profit margins. Shares in Charles Schwab, one of the financial institutions hardest hit by the banking crisis, have fallen by about a third since early March. Charles Schwab will report its first quarter results in next Monday, making the company more aware of the impact of the banking crisis on the U.S. brokerage. Schwab has still insisted its business was extremely strong, with $53 billion in client inflows in March, almost a record for the month. As consumers decided to increase their cash holdings, they expect financing costs to eventually fall, thus reviving their overall earnings growth. Charles Schwab also told a customer, while the first quarter was certainly a challenging period, reflecting a negative investor sentiment, continued interest rates and regional banking turmoil, Schwab's consumer-centric growth model remained intact and performed well. That's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like. See you next episode.